praise you jesus thank you lord hallelujah hallelujah please be seated now um, as a response to this sharing i feel it is very very great success very good excellent only thing uh, except one group they did not get my thought probably they did not pray to holy spirit they were discussing so that is not the purpose we can discuss anywhere but our life is we are like a we are like an instrument in the hands of the holy spirit the whole ministry of the church is the work of the holy spirit our vocation is the work of the holy spirit and when we are called the lord is giving us khula hath that i enormous gifts and when we start recognizing these gifts then we will wonder oh how great that how beautiful the life with the holy spirit and now that is why this is not a retreat this is not a discussion program this is a workshop on evangelization uh, i would recommend you you note down this chapter of redemptor is missio redemptor is missio is a right way redemptor is missio is a very very practical encyclical formation so also evangeli nunciandi you write it down this you must have one personal copy for yourself <laughs> i recommend and the first three chapters of redemptor is missio first chapter is jesus is the savior of the world second chapter is the kingdom of god third chapter is holy spirit is the principal agent of the mission and in which of john paul to says the the lord and the church do not want you do anything without the holy spirit so this i may say it again and again so your our life will become very easy very easy <laughs> very easy <laughs> with the once we know how to how to take the help of the holy spirit and now as you are sharing this i was just getting an idea now in your wherever you are wherever you are you can have two three people sometimes get together in prayer two three people together wherever you are we speak so many things so many jokes and so many games but do we ever think about getting together to pray a little bit this way so this is something like that a practice okay you have time for like recreation you have time for prayer uh, sorry playing you have time for gardening you have time for so many things so once in a while make it possible that you sit together and this way what we we did now oh holy spirit come holy spirit anoint us and then everybody pray for one another and speak to holy spirit what the holy spirit want to tell you and now many many of the visions you did not get correct correct uh, interpretation or no interpretation at all that is a stage now as you pray more for when you practice more when you pray for more wisdom when you do more personal prayer when you ask holy spirit give me more and more graces give me more and more of the charisms then you will get 
improvement in this. Then you will grow in this charisms. And this is a sure success for evangelization, a sure success. Sometimes, suddenly we, we were, suddenly suppose the rector asked you, somebody asked you, brother, can you give a small talk in this conference? Oh, no, 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 I am not prepared, I, have, I need time to prepare. Never say that. <laughs> you must have ready answer, yes. I'll do. Then what you should do? Hey, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, tell me, tell me, tell me, what should I speak? <laughs> and Holy Spirit will tell you. That is how we have to be trained. We have to be trained. We should never say no to a, a invitation to share or speak few words. The word of God is now coming, now coming. Now coming, Luke 12, 12. Please read. Luke 12, 12. Luke 12, 12 says, when you stand... <laughs> exactly, I got this now. See, Luke 12, 12. This is another gift. When I want a word, and I just open the Bible, exactly that word is looking at me. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that moment what you should say. Say everybody. Say everybody louder. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that moment what you should say. Come on everybody louder. Girls' voices are bigger than bo boys. <laughs> Come on boys. Louder. The Holy Spirit will teach you at that moment what you should say. Yeah. See, I am, I am now, now this is how many days? So many days I am preaching. I have never made any note what I should speak. I never made any note. I am just be with the Holy Spirit. Every time the Holy Spirit tell me, now you do this, now you do this, now you do this. So slowly, slowly we get into a practice that somebody prompting, somebody prompting in us, like now the Holy Spirit prompted in me, Luke 12, 12. I heard the voice, Luke 12, 12. Okay, now another important point I want to now we have to uh, understand is say once again everybody hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. praise you Jesus praise thank you Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. hallelujah okay now when we think about the word charism Charism, these gifts of the Holy Spirit is charism, but there is another meaning for charism, charism of your vocation, charism of your vocation. The very vocation itself is a charism. So as an example, my vocation is, the charism of my vocation is to be a family man with my wife, to have children, and to be a father and a grandfather. I have two children, a daughter and a son. My daughter is a theologian, and my son is an engineer, and they have two grandchildren. I mean, I have two, two grand, four grandchildren, so that is my vocation. My vocation to be a family man. That is a charism. So, in my life, my sexuality, my lifestyle will be according to relationship with my wife and my children. That is the part of my charism. 
Now pay attention, everybody. Are you with me? Wave your hand. Are you all with me? Yeah. This is very important point. Very important point. As a religious, as a priest, or as a for a vocation of a priest, vocation of a religious is a charism. Why it is a why should we understand it is a charism? For every charism, God provided the grace required to live that charism. For every charism, you need a grace. So to live a religious life with the with the chastity, poverty, and obedience, you need a special grace. So that grace you will receive when you recognize it is my charism to be. So this no, this is not necessary when to receive when you become a priest or when you have a final uh, final profession. No, this grace you have already have even when we join in your formation. So that is how, as a for me, in the formation time, you already have a chastity. You have no difficulty for chastity. If you believe it is my charism, and God will give me grace according to that charism. You know, there were, uh, when I gave retreat to seminarians like this, you can also meet me in my free time. Uh, sometimes some of the brothers come and share their difficulties in the sexuality. So also religious. So I told them, have you recognized that this is a charism? And when you recognize it is a charism, you are eligible to get grace according to that charism. Then only you can live a life of chastity. It is not by law, oh no, I will not do that, I will not do that, I will hold on, I will. It is not like that. It is a charism. So God gives us that grace, extraordinary grace to live our life of chastity, life of poverty, life of obedience. And so, when you every day pray, O oh Lord, Holy Spirit, give me that grace according to my charism. And I prayed like that to some of the brothers who had difficulty, and in a few days, that person become very free. So also the sisters. So, apart from different charisms, first of all, you must recognize your religious vocation itself is a charism. Normally, God created every man to live with a woman. So also every woman to live with a man. But God chose out of them, some of them only for his work of the kingdom of God as a special gift. For the kingdom of God, they are sacrificing that other life so, everyone who sacrificed that life received a special grace to live the life of chastity. So, I am telling at this age, we may have difficulty in, uh, about our sexuality. We may have many temptations. 
then we feel doubt. Oh, that means this is not my call. Don't immediately decide it. You must pray, oh Lord, this is my charism. Therefore, give me the grace according to my charism. And what is grace? What is grace? What is our action? Whenever I say grace, you must have that action. What is the grace? Right hand up, left hand. Grace is participation of, come on everybody, participation of God's life, divine life, in human life, transforming human life and divinizing it. So as a normal human being, we may have so many temptation, inclination, sexuality, so many things. Even poverty, we may feel like people living post life, we want to live a post life. Why should I be obedient? I have my own will to do. All these questions may come. But when you have the grace, what is grace? Participation of divine life into human life. This grace will transform us. The grace will provide a separate, very easy way, very easy way. <laughs> Very easy way. So we can see in so many saints' life, so many saints' life, they have been forced to leave their vocation which is that saint? Is it Saint Albert or that two, two, uh, his family wanted that he don't become priest, so they send a, <laughs> send a beautiful woman into him. And so they thought this woman will attract him and so that he will be tempted with that woman and he will leave that uh, Vocation, but what he did, he 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 took a uh, masal with a fire and made her to run away from that. <laughs> he took uh, a masal. Is that right? Is that right word? A torch with fire, and he went behind her with that fire and ran him away, made her to run away. Because he is confident my life is given to God. His grace will help me. His grace will help me. And even when we happen to have so much friendship with so many people, I remember now, once I was giving retreat to a big group of priests, so the second day, one young priest came and gave a testimony. Testimony. It is his testimony. I am saying what he says. He said, my dear fathers, I am sorry. There is a girl waiting outside the retreat center for me. And she keep on sending me message. I cannot live without you. I will commit suicide if you don't marry me. <laughs> like this. But today and because I came for this retreat, today I have decided never, never, never I abandon my call. I have decided. And I send a message to her, please go away, please go away, don't disturb me. This he spoke publicly. So this is the way these days we will be attacked with several temptations. Even some girls may keep saying, Oh, I love you, brother. I cannot live without you. If you don't love me, I will commit suicide. Oh, you will commit suicide. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Then I will love you. No, 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 no. <laughs> that is the devil's way. <laughs> that is the devil's way. So these are the, these are the situations. These situations will come in our life. 
Life is not an easy way. That is why Psalm 23 says, even if you walk in the, valley of, in the valley of darkness, you have no fear because I am with you. So we have to always focus who is with us. God is with us. Jesus is with us. God the Father is with us. Holy Spirit is with us. So we must ask Holy Spirit, what should I do? That girl is sending me message like this. What should I do? And the Holy Spirit will tell you. <coughs> okay. Now, another aspect of our evangelization. You know, we already read the uh, Acts of Apostle, chapter 2, verse 17. It is the Pentecost which is the beginning of the church. And you see the first words of Pentecost, first words of Peter, the Pope, he says, it will come to pass in the last days, God says, that I will pour out a portion of my spirit upon all flesh, upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. See? Your sons and daughters will prophesy. That is another gift of Holy Spirit. Gift of prophecy. Then visions. Now, my recommendation is, you must read Acts of Apostles. Often people quote from Isaiah, Jeremiah, that is okay, but that is not our life. That Old Testament is fulfilled through Jesus. So we must understand the difference between Old Testament and New Testament. Everything is word of God. But what is New Testament? New Testament is after the incarnation, the whole universe is divided. What is the division? We say BC and what is next we say? AD. What is the meaning of AD? Eh? What is the meaning of AD? After death? What is AD? I didn't hear you. Come on. Somebody loudly say, what is AD? Anna Domini. What is the meaning of Anna Domini? It's the era of God. Era of God. We say 2024. What is 2024? It is the era of Christ. So, before Christ and after Christ, what is exactly happened? I have did something yesterday, but I think nobody shared anything about it. <laughs> you were in another world. I was speaking so many things about mystery of incarnation and all. It is all fallen on a <laughs> you have to, I may say it again, the whole universe, historically divided through the incarnation, that is through incarnation, the whole humanity is assumed in the body of Christ, in the body of Christ. So that is the, uh, uh, it is better to take from the, <laughs> from the Eucharist, uh, before anaphora or in the anaphora, in the anaphora, before the institution prayer. Susamajar, Padne Keteyari, Vahe. हाथ धोने के भी थी स्मरण गीत 
विश्वास की हे प्रभु ईश्वर इन सभी स्वर्गवासियों के साथ हम तेरे धन्यवाद करते हैं जो शब्द स्वयं ईश्वर हैं और तेरा तेरा आत्मज तेरा आत्मज है इज इट राइट आई एम नॉट सो यूज टू रीड यू नो तेरा आत्मज है आत्मज आत्मज मतलब द स्पिरिचुअल सन करेक्ट आत्मज आदल आत्मज उसकी हम उपासना करते हैं वह तेरे सदृश है वह तेरा सदृश है कौन प्रभु ईसा मसीह तेरे तेरी दीप्ति है और तेरे तप का प्रतिरूप है ना तेरा वट इज दैट वर्ड तेरा तब तत्व 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 का प्रतिरूप है इन दिस पेज नंबर ट्वेंटी नाइन प्रतिरूप है तेरे बराबर होते हुए भी दास का रूप धारण कर उसने अपने को दीनहीन बना लिया वह विवेक बुद्धि और आमरदा से संबन्न आत्मा के साथ नश्वर शरीर को अपना कर दैट इज वट आई वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग होम ईश्वर ने जो स्वयं वजन था वो वजन नश्वर शरीर को अपनाया फ्रॉम फ्रॉम वेर ही गॉट द नश्वर शरीर उसको कहां से मिला ये शरीर कैन सबड़ी से है? वो कहां से मिला प्रभु यीशु को नश्वर शरीर वो समस्त मानव का शरीर है द होल ह्यूमैनिटी इन फैक्ट इट इज नॉट ओनली ह्यूमैनिटी द होल क्रिएशन द होल क्रिएशन इज इन फैक्ट इन द बॉडी ऑफ क्राइस्ट बिकॉज ही इज द फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल क्रिएशन टेक क्लोशियंस क्लोशियन चैप्टर वन फिफ्टीन एंड सिक्सटीन क्लोशियन चैप्टर वन 15 and 16 this may be a little strong teaching but i suppose it is good for you to understand this colossians 1:15 says he is the image of the invisible god he is the image of the invisible god the first born of all creation the first born of all creation for in him were created all things in heaven and in earth the visible and invisible whether thrones or dominations or principalities or powers all things were created through him and for him so everybody please repeat this all things everybody all things all things were created through him and for him that's it so in the holy mass when we offer the bread and wine this bread and wine represent the whole creation whole creation we are in our offertory we are offering the whole creation saint john paul ii in a teaching of oriental lumen oriental lumen 
there is a teaching here wherein he says the bread and wine they are material this material bread become the body of Christ I imagine a material matter become the body of Christ and the the word and carrying God to us carrying God to us that is called theophorical please write down that word theophorical 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 let me see where it is It is in paragraph ten, paragraph eleven in Oriental Lumen. Please write down. You can later on refer it. Oriental Lumen. Correct in the village. Oriental Lumen is a very important apostolic teaching. particularly for the zero malabar church and in that about the eastern liturgy the greatness of the eastern liturgy for john paul to say right here god saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good Genesis 131 though all this is marked by the trajectory of sin which weighs down matter and obscures its clarity the later is redeemed in the incarnation and becomes fully theophoric that is capable of putting us in touch with the father this property is most apparent in the holy mysteries the sacrament of the church uh, it's a very strong teaching but it is very easy for us to understand the word theophoric that is carrying god who is carrying god to us now in the holy mass the matter the bread and wine the matter is carrying god to us and so john paul to says so in that way the whole creation is involving in the liturgy the whole creation okay now why i wanted to say that our why did i say this from where we came to that point hmm? yeah jesus is the in jesus the whole creation is in jesus because he is the first of all creation ah okay so now thank you the point i want to bring home is in evangelization whom are we evangelizing <laughs> see now i am evangelizing the wonderful believers who have given commitment to the lord but evangelization is for those people who have not heard about jesus do not know about jesus 
So, what should be our attitude towards them? We call it non-Christian. I would not call them non-Christians. Sometimes we call Gentile. In the Bible, in the New Testament or Old Testament, Gentiles means those who are not Jews. All others other than Jews are Gentiles. When uh, we are all we are all Gentiles according to biblical tale, because we are not Jew. We are all Gentiles. So we must understand. Now pay attention. When you are talking, I am very terribly distracted. Please, I am going to give you something very important. I know this is your style. When I am talking, you keep on talking something. Maybe you met after a long time and talking, talking, talking. But then you miss the very good session. And I will be also distracted. Pay attention now. Pay attention. How come this Jesus Christ became the central point of the whole creation historically we say before Christ and anadomini because and in anadomini means the whole creation is now in Jesus Christ from the time of incarnation so the whole humanity he assumed in his body so we already heard it from the from the from our liturgy from our liturgy oh manush unone unone teri dipti aur unone kiya vah buddhi aur सामने आत्मा के साथ नश्वर शरीरों को अपनाकर उन्होंने नश्वर शरीरों को अपनाया मतलब समस्त संसार के सिर्फ मानव नहीं समस्त संसार को उन्होंने अपने शरीर पर अपनाया क्लोशियंस 116 So imagine, we think they are Hindus, they are Muslims, they are Buddhists, they are Punjabi, Parsi. That is what our vocabulary. But for Jesus, they are all in His body. They are all in His body. This we must understand. Then only we can evangelize. So for that, we have to go through the teaching of the church. teaching of the church means not only the catechism of catholic church the encyclicals of the pope now take the encyclical of pope, Fa- pope francis fratelli tutti fratelli tutti means all are brothers we cannot say he is a hindu he is a buddhist no we must say all are my brothers and all are in the body of christ with this mind we must see people whom we are going to evangelize maybe that person is doing so many cruel thing to christianity but yet we have to recognize him oh father oh jesus he do not know forgive them to evangelize first of all we must know jesus is the savior of the world savior of the world and once we have that attitude we have love for the whole humanity whole humanity whole humanity we will feel brothers and sisters of jesus christ so that is why the success of mother teresa or francis of cc of pope francis pope francis goes to all muslim countries all so many other countries he was in abu dhabi there were 
100,000 people in the holy mass, most of them were not Christians. And his preaching was this, <laughs> very interesting preaching. So you have to follow all, because these days, I know, I hope you have mobile phone you are using. Even now you are listening the mobile phone, even in the talk. <laughs> Don't worry, carry on. So, so much you are using the mobile phone, but why don't you use to listen to the preaching of the Pope? You can get Vatican news. Every day you can listen to Pope. And in Abu Dhabi, Pope said, in his homely, he said, Jesus Christ first spoke Blessed are you, quoting from the Sermon on Mount. Say everybody, what did Jesus say? Say louder. Blessed are you. Then Pope Francis says, he did not say you will be blessed. He did not say you will be blessed. He said you are blessed. What a wonderful <laughs> teaching. You are blessed, no matter whether you are Hindu, Muslim, Punjabi, Parsi. But Jesus, Jesus did not say this to the Catholics or those who are baptized. Jesus was speaking in the Sermon on Mount. None of them were Catholics there. None of them were baptized, were there. In the public life of public life of Jesus, none of them were baptized. He said, blessed are you. So what can be the meaning of that? Why he said, blessed are you? Because the whole humanity, all of you, you are really in my body, in my flesh. And you are seeing me face to face. You are seeing God face to face. What great blessing you can have. So, our understanding must be filled with the wisdom of God. Then we will get such meanings from the Bible. Now, I was writing a script for a, for a catechism school. That is another project I'm doing, an online catechism school. Because in Germany, in Europe, there are no catechism at all. So we are going to make an online catechism. So when I made a, uh, one first standard text, some of the parents said, oh, Thomas Paul, this is too hard for children to understand this. I only said, what is the meaning of name Jesus? Can somebody say? What is the word meaning of Jesus? Can you say louder? What is the word meaning of Jesus? I am not hearing. Anybody saying? Eh? Can you raise your hand who is saying that? Anybody saying what is the meaning of word Jesus? Nobody, I think. Is there anybody saying something? I can't hear because of the noise here. Okay, here? Eh? Ah, <laughs> that is not the meaning. That is also not the right meaning. You said Emmanuel, God is with us. So, this is what, imagine. So, you must have a reference. In Catechism, paragraph 430 says, it is a Hebrew word. Jesus is a Hebrew word which means God saves. God saves. And in that, there are two parts. First is his identity, another is his mission. Yeah, see, <laughs> I just opened, I got it. Jesus means, in Hebrew, God saves. At the Annunciation, the angel Gabriel 
gave him the name Jesus as the proper name which expresses both his identity and his mission. So the two things in that one name, his identity, in identity, in identity he is, he is God, in mission he is the servior. So this is only I was teaching in the first standard. <laughs> And so some of the parents say, oh, that is too much for them to understand. They don't understand. So I came back to the Lord. I said, Lord, see, this is what they are telling. They don't, the children don't understand. Now, maybe I might have said this, but I may be repeating. Listen, with this we will close and we go for the tea. Jesus said to me, when he speaks something very personal, he called me like my papa, mommy called me. My papa and mommy call me Thomas. Eh? Say everybody, Thomas. Eh? <laughs> Once again, Thomas. Eh? Yeah. That is like a very personal way. My mother called me Thomas. Eh? So the Lord is calling me Thomas. Eh? Oh my God. Then I know something he is going to speak very personal. He said, Thomas. Eh? I was in the house of widow whose son died. And I said to the dead body of that son, Young man, I said to you a race. Say everybody, what did he say? Young man, I said to you a race. Say everybody, young man, I said to you a race. Look at one another and say that. Look at one another. Young man, I say to you, erase. And what happened? The dead man rose up. Everybody astonished. Now, question is, Jesus is asking me a question. Please, please listen to me. Hello, hello. Please listen. Jesus is asking us, did he understand what I said? <laughs> did this young man understood what I said? He was dead. Then how he got up? Thomas, eh? Thomas, eh? Did he understand? So we always think in our intellectual brain, oh, they don't understand. We must know Jesus' words are so powerful, even it has power to raise the dead into life. The dead man, through the power of the word, got new life and he got up. Lazarus, come out! Dead Lazarus, who was already stinking, he came out. That is the power of the words of Jesus. So when you read the scripture, oh, Isaiah said, Jeremiah said, that is not the word you have to focus. Focus on the word of Jesus. That is the incarnate word, the risen word. The risen Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, he, is, he was word and he is now received the whole humanity in him, in his body. That Jesus is telling, young man, arise. The dead man came out. My dear friends, so let us, we don't, we, we don't understand the full power of God's, Jesus' power. When you understand the full power of Jesus through such examples, then only you are a priest. Then only. So as a priest or as a religious, you have got an extraordinary syllabus, extraordinary graces of understanding. Oh, one more sentence I will speak. Now all these visions we had, this is only a very simple thing. But more 
as you pray more this gift is called revelation gift gift of revelation so, uh, in the in another talk i will explain it more but you must understand one thing when you have these gifts like this what's going to happen tomorrow onwards when you read a scripture that scripture is going to give you another dimension you start thinking what can be another meaning of that what can be a revelation in that scripture that is what going to happen to, for you these gifts we have operated the working of holy spirit opened in you it is not only seeing these type of visions but it is already opened a big area of gift of revelation so now when you read a scripture you will automatically start thinking what can be the meaning o oh, holy spirit what can be the deeper meaning of that there you go there you go come on let us thank and praise god hallelujah hallelujah everybody praise you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah 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 everybody hallelujah 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 praise you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus young man come on everybody young man arise yes now you can arise and go for tea <laughs> all right i will be sitting here 